Hey DIYers, Dylan here with Alarm Grid. Today we're gonna to go over how to set up the IQ installer app with the IQ 4 NS. Uh, so the NS stands for no screen. Pretty obvious, we have no screen on our panel. So any programming that we wanna do locally for this, we're gonna need the IQ installer application. I'm gonna show you how to pair that to the panel. Uh, we're gonna program a door sensor and make sure it's functioning properly. And then just as a side note as well, if you have this panel connected with an alarm company and they have that set up with alarm.com, your alarm company can also connect to the panel remotely and assist you with programming through there. But if not, if you wanna program this locally, download the application and we're gonna go through those steps here. Okay, so first thing we'll want to do is power on the system. Uh, so right now we have the back plate removed so we can access the back. Uh, we have a PowerG daughter card installed uh, there are extra slots if you want to install other daughter cards into the system that will make this work with other uh, RF sensors. Uh, we're going to use the included power supply, but you can also run your own wiring to this. Uh, if you use 18 gauge wiring, you can do a wire run up to about 98 feet. There is only a barrel connector for the system. So if you do run your own wire, you're going to have to splice these with your own wiring. So you can still utilize the barrel connector. And then there is a DC power supply that's included with the system as well. You'll just need to use that. So first thing we will do is hook up the battery, which is already installed into the panel. Just get this connected. Push that in nice and secured. And then we are going to connect the barrel power supply right there. Let's close up the back plate. And then we have some lights. <clears throat> Excuse me, we have some lights indicating that we do have power. So there's not much else that we can do here. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull up the IQ installer app. Okay, so we have the IQ installer app already downloaded. Download this from the App Store. Welcome to installer. Now, when you first load up the application, there will be a few terms and conditions you'll want to accept. We've already accepted those, so we have the start option here. Okay, it's gonna ask us to scan the QR code that's on the back of the system. So let's just turn this back over. We're gonna press scan QR on the phone and bring the camera over to the available QR code. Just flatten that out. Okay, so when the QR code is scanned, it's gonna pull up the panel information so you can match the serial number and the IMEI number that are on the back of the panel to what shows on the installer app. Okay, and both of these are looking good, so we'll press continue. Okay, so now we're gonna put the panel into a pairing mode so we're going to press the power button twice. So if you're looking at the panel from the front, this will be on the right-hand side. One, two. Power button pressed for installer app pairing. Okay. We have confirmation from the panel and we're gonna wait for this to start flashing blue. Oh, actually solid blue. So we have solid blue there. Press continue. Okay. Yes. Pairing process has started. We're gonna enter in the access code. Uh, so this is essentially like the installer code for the system. We have not changed ours yet, so it's still the default. One, 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 one. Installer app pairing completed. Okay, perfect. We have confirmation from the system and the application is showing as well. Uh, now we can change the access code. So we're going to put in 3333. Three, three, three. We're going to verify it, 3333. Three, three, three. And you'll want to remember that code is that's how you're going to access the programming for this uh, through the installer application. Okay, so that is all set up. It's going to bring us through an installation wizard. We'll press start. Okay, this is gonna look for local Wi-Fi networks. We have ours at the top here. Going to enter in the password. 
Okay, password is inserted. We'll press connect. Okay, connection connected to the network. Perfect. I'm going to press the right arrow. Okay, we can do a system check. It's going to run automatically. So it's going to go through the communication options. So uh, the panel has a built-in cellular communicator. That's what's going to be used to get this set up with alarm.com. Uh, the Wi-Fi connection is a somewhat optional connection. Uh, but basically, when both are connected with alarm.com, both signals are going to be sent out at the same time. Uh, the Wi-Fi is usually quicker, but the cellular is more reliable. And then if an alarm goes off and a signal is sent out, whichever signal reaches alarm.com first is what is going to take place at alarm.com and then send over to the monitoring station as well. So since we do not have this registered with alarm.com, we may get a failure on the cellular test, which is fine. So if you are setting this up for the first time and you get the fail on the cellular test, uh, just know it's because it's not connected with alarm.com as of yet. So we know that this is gonna fail and we don't have any download configuration. That's also from alarm.com. So I'm just gonna press the right arrow Okay, cellular failed. We're gonna wait for download configuration, which is likely gonna fail as well, again, because this is not set up with alarm.com as of yet. Okay. All right, so we have the cellular that failed and we have the download configuration that failed. Again, both expected because this is not set up with alarm.com. Uh, so you can start programming the system before this is paired with alarm.com. You're just going to get these two failures. If this was already connected with alarm.com, the cellular and that download configuration would both pass. Uh, when you are setting this up with alarm.com, you're going to want to contact your monitoring company and provide them the IMEI number that's on the back of the system. That's essentially how they're going to get this registered with alarm.com and how that communication path is going to be set up. Okay, so we have both those failed for now, which is fine. I'm gonna press next. Okay, so now we are in the add sensor option. This is how we're gonna start programming sensors to the panel. Now, again, we have a power G only system. So once I get this open, I'm gonna show you the contact that we are using. All right, so I have this open. This is a PG9303 door contact sensor. We're gonna to wanna to open this up, press start. This is gonna put the panel into auto learn mode. We're gonna hold down the enrollment button for five seconds. Okay, after I let go of the enrollment button, we have the sensor showing here. We can confirm sensor right there, 1098040, that's the ID, and that matches with what we have on the installer app. So we're gonna press okay. We're gonna allow it to add. We have confirmation from the panel, I'm not sure if you heard that, but it said sensor added successfully. We're gonna close the sensor up. And then right here, we can uh, name the sensor if we like. So we can press into there. That's gonna show us the sensor type. We can edit the sensor name. We can edit how it works. So right now it's set to entry, exit, normal delay. And then if we press in there, it gives us the other options that we can set this to. This is basically different ways for the sensor to function with the system. Uh, for today, we're gonna keep it on entry, exit. Uh, voice prompt, so when this opens, it's going to announce the sensor on the panel. And we have chime types, so we can change how this is gonna sound. So right now it's on default of high wire, uh, but let's say I wanna put this to deer deer. Okay, activation LEDs enabled, and source power G. So everything is looking good here, we're gonna save. All right. Sensor updated successfully. That's all we're learning for now. So we're going to do stop auto learn. 
Yes. Next. If we're going to add any Z-Wave home automation devices, that's uh, such as locks, lights, thermostats, this is the process that you'll go through here. Pretty similar to the sensor, you'll press start. It'll have you activate the Z-Wave device, and then that'll pull in here, give us the same kind of editing screen that we got for the sensor. We're not doing a Z-Wave today, so we're just going to press next. IQ remote, so you do have the option of pairing secondary keypads to the panel. Uh, if we were going to add those, again, this is the screen, we put into pair, we'd activate the actual keypad, and I'll pair with the main panel. So the IQ remote, that is a touchscreen keypad. Uh, so if you don't like just accessing this through the application or through alarm.com, you can set up a secondary keypad, have that installed into a different area in the home, and then have that pair with the actual panel. And then we can do add users. So we're gonna do plus master. I'm going to put my name here, Dylan. We can set a user code. So this is how we're gonna arm and disarm the system. I'm gonna put our code to one, two, three, four. And then expiration date, I want this to go forever. But if you want to set a certain time for users to work, it'll bring up this calendar and you can select an expiration date for the code to stop working. All right, so we have that all set. We're going to save. Oh, it looks like that code is already taken. So let me just do a different code here. I'll do four, three, two, one. And then we can view the user list here. So we actually do have two masters already set up. That's why it declined when I was setting up the one, two, three, four. By default, that's already in the panel. And I'll be right there. We'll keep that as, a, uh, as is. And then we can change the installer code again if we wanted. We can set up a duress code. That's a secret way to set off the alarm and have a signal sent to the monitoring station without the actual siren triggering. And we have the dealer code. Uh, by default, that's 2222. That's just going to give us a few extra uh, features within the dealer menu. So everything here is fine. This will be dealer contact info. So you can put your alarm company. So uh, for instance, if you were signed up with us, dealer name alarm grid, our phone number 888-818-7728 and the website www.alarmgrid.com. Can actually edit that. Let's just put that in real quick. So alarm grid. Phone number 888-818-7728. And then website www.alarmgrid.com. Press done, press save. And now we have our company information on the application. So we'll press next. Okay, so here uh, we can check for any updates available. Just for the point of this video, we're gonna skip the update option, but if you do wanna check for the updates, uh, just make sure that the internet connection went through and you press the start option there. So we're just gonna press next. Congratulations, system is set up and ready to use. So we'll finish. Okay, so this is essentially the main screen. Again, we have the Wi-Fi connection showing. We have the cellular with an X just because this is not connected with alarm.com yet. Once that is connected, that's gonna show the signal strength. We have the power supply icon indicating the power is connected and the battery is fully charged. Uh, so let's go ahead and just test this out. We're gonna fault the sensor we had programmed. We have confirmation from the panel. Then we can check in the installer app. That's the sense we had programmed before. We see the broken link indicating that's open. We'll close that again, and then that link disappears. And again, confirmation from the panel. As you see, we don't see much indication here. When you have this set up with alarm.com, uh, that's going to show more information from the panel. 
but we do have the events option here. So we see the door opening and closing. It just closed, let's open it again. And then that's gonna fill up the event list. And then closed once again. Okay, so that is essentially setting up the panel with the IQ installer app. Again, there are more features there. We're gonna make future videos and write more FAQs on our website, uh, reviewing the Z-Wave setup, uh, the updates, so on and so forth, connecting this with alarm.com, uh, running system tests, which we have the option right there. These are essentially the tests that I had gone through during that initial installation wizard. And then you can adjust uh, some settings here, language theme, I'm sorry, the, uh, the language for the system, the theme for the application, uh, temperature scale, and then just some useful information there, privacy policy, terms of use, et cetera, et cetera. And then we can go back into config. We have more options here. We can add more users, go back into installation, uh, view the about section. So if we need that IMEI number, we can go to cellular, get the IMEI right there, and we'll provide that to our monitoring company so they can get this set up with alarm.com. Update patches. We can do a reboot of the panel. We can power down the panel. We can adjust the sound. That's the upgrade software button that we had skipped earlier. And you can set up multiple partitions for the panel as well. Okay, so that is getting the IQ installer application paired with the IQ4NS. We programmed a door sensor. We tested the door sensor, make sure it's functioning. Uh, if you did like the video, please like the video, hit the subscribe button, uh, and hit the bell icon to be notified about any future videos we release. You can also reach out uh, and contact us for assistance. We have an email. Our email address is support at alarmgrid.com. Uh, you can reach us by phone. Our phone number is 888-818-7728. And if you come to our website, www.alarmgrid.com, we have a live chat option on there as well. So anyway, feel free to reach out and we'll be happy to assist you. Again, my name is Dylan from Alarm Grid and thank you for watching.